Hello everyone and welcome back! Did you miss me? In the past few months in making videos, I've been drifting away from my trend to making videos about specific civilizations, just to see an impressive growth in views from each one of them. And that surprised me a lot because, I mean, look at the quality, it's quite atrocious. But how did they get the color from? They got it from some sort of crab that lived nearby and if killed in a certain way it became purple. But um, yeah, let's get back to the phonetic. Anyways, uh, a newer DLC about pre-Roman Italy is coming out for Rome 2 Total War. And believe it or not, I'm pretty hyped. Because I've always been fascinated by that time of history in question. So I intend to make a series of videos covering some of the most interesting civilizations and peoples that lived in Italy before Rome came knocking at their door and beat the crap out of them. We'll start off with the Samnites. They are also playable in the game, yet, as we will find out soon, their origins were way more complicated than what it seems. So grab your popcorn and your fan, cause it's warm outside, perhaps some coconut water if you have access to it, and let's get right into it. For this video, we'll be concentrating on the central part of Italy. This is the area between what would be the Etruscan territory and the Greek colonies. Here lived many populations that originally were all part of a group that archaeologists call the Oscohumbrians. These people came in Italy before the Latins, the Greeks and the Etruscan and gradually spread around the peninsula, eventually dividing into two main groups, the Umbrians and the Sabines. These two groups had very little difference among them originally but they might have divided up due to change in their culture and perhaps even language due to isolation from each other caused by geographical factors. While these two were minding their own business, the world around them was changing. The Greeks settled in the south, Romans, Etruscan and Celts settled up north, and suddenly these two groups were pushed towards each other and conflict ensued. It is unclear how long this conflict lasted, but according to legend, the Sabines were the ones losing, so what they did was something that changed the cultural landscape of Italy for centuries. They took all of the kids born in between March the 1st and the 30th of June and essentially brought them up as living gods and dedicated them to a particular divine entity. Then, when they reached adulthood, they would venture out in the unknown. From these hordes of young people, usually a new settlement or even a new tribe would be born. This process was called Ver Sanctum, which translates to the Holy Spring, and it would be adopted by the Romans in the future as well, except that they would extend the date up until the 1st of July, probably due to a different calendar. Anyways, the Sabines are usually given credit for, the crea for creating this custom, which would lead to the creation of the Samnitic tribes. Now I say tribes because in reality, there were four main groups of people that ancient historians refer to as the Samnites, which will eventually unite to form a confederation, the one we know as the Confederation of the Samnites. These four tribes were, fo were the following. The Pentry, who lived in the north of the territory in between the Italian regions of Molise and Abruzzo, the Irpini in the south in Basilicata, the Piceni, who lived in Marche region, and finally the Caudini, close to the city of Benevento, north of Campania. All of these had more or less the same language and looked pretty similar physically since they shared common ancestors yet their culture and religion was a bit different. For every verse sanctum there was a different spirit animal which later would become somewhat the symbol of the tribe or even create their own little cult around it. The, pen the pantry at the bull, the pini at the wolf, the piceni at the woodpecker and the caudini at the boar. The pantry and the caudini are also responsible for the foundation of two of the most important Samnitian settlements, Bovianum and Abella, which derive from the Latin words for bull and wild boar, respectively, 
We do not know for certain how impactful this worshipping of different animals was when doing diplomacy, but since they actually eventually united into a strong bond, we must assume the difference was not so drastic. The Samnites were farmers and shepherds in general, except for perhaps the Piceni, who also became famous for being umber traders and often traded with the Greeks and Etruscans. One thing all of them had in common though was great skill in combat. Mercenaries from Sanium showed great strength in battle and showed it to the Greeks and other Italian neighbors in numerous occasions. Rome was no exception. Just like Carthage, the Samnites fought with Rome in three separate wars, all pretty bloody and impactful historically. I'm not going to go too much into depth with them, but in a few words, the first war was in uh, 43 BC, after the Samnites conquered the Etruscan settlement of Capua, north of Campania, and Rome declared war on the Samnites after the Etruscans begged for assistance. The war ended two years later, after the Battle of Sessuola, where the Samnites lost and Rome let, uh, let them off easy with a respectable treaty. After the battle, of Ro uh, after the battle Rome was recognized as an influential power by other great entities like Carthage, which sent emissaries and improved relations with them. The second war was between 326 and 304 BC, and it all started after the Romans made a new settlement inside Simnician land. This war was uh, more intense even though it had long periods of peace in between, just like the Second Pugin Punic War, and it ended the same way. Except this time, Rome kept uh, an un on undermining some nation rule of it over its borders. The final blow was after the last war between 280, 298 and 290, where after the Battle of Aquileia in 293, all of was lost and most of the territory was assimilated into the Roman Republic as a new province called Sanio or Sanium. The history of the Samnites is kinda sad, but not that much, as their submission was something necessary for the development of Europe, seeing that they were quite backwards in technology. But thankfully, their culture managed to die naturally as Romans allowed it to keep it going under the rule. I still wish there was still more to say, but for now, that's all I got. This uh, falls also for anthropology. For those of you like me who wondered how the Samnites looked like, all I can give you is the following answer based on my guesses. If the Samnites and their ancestors spread around uh, through Versandum, it means that overall they all came from one big family, which in turn made them look very similar, and uh, archaeological evidence seems, seems to, to prove it. The geography of Central Italy is not diverse enough to make these people change significantly, so chances are that you could barely spot a difference from any member of these four tribes looking at looks alone. My other guess comes from the Romans. In terms of body type and height, I can imagine the Samnites being relatively short and wide, about 160 centimeters at most. This is because they followed a similar lifestyle and lived in similar environments of the Romans. So they were probably short Caucasian, perhaps slightly brown people with dark straight hair and brown eyes. Basically the typical Italian. In fact, many Italians may have some nights uh, um, as their distant ancestors without even knowing it. The demographics of Lower Central Italy also hasn't changed that much over the last 2000 years, so I can assume that many people back then still look very similar to the Samnites, which is quite cool. Though a little bit of change there has been, so not everyone in Central Italy may look like the Samnites, though a probably, probably a majority still does. Anyway, that's all I have. Thank you so much for watching if you managed to get this far. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to make more videos like this about civilization of pre-Roman Italy. That being said, see you next time with a brand new video.